YouTube, welcome back to the top eight grand finale and the top deck list of the tournament by watching as long as you can. That greatly supports these videos. Liking, commenting, and subscribing also helps. And what you're going to be witnessing here is heroes versus tier one best deck snake eyes. So that means hero stands no chance, right? Well, within the top 16, heroes has defeated another snake eye player. Can this mad lad do it again? Hajime. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Heroes going first within the top 16. We only saw the mad lad hero player going second and doing very well. And I kept on saying the deck is a good turn one. So we're going to see that through Ferris, discard a hero, equip an increase, increase tribute to Ferris, and then summon a vine from the deck. Now, we're gonna be setting up the back row here. We already have our mass change, which could go into the Dark Law, which will force any card sent to the graveyard to be banished instead, which if a Rise Heart and Dimension Shifter beats Snake Eyes, then this should too. This should hard counter Snake Eyes. That's what I'm thinking. And we do have Subvert. No, we didn't have Subversion. This looks like Subversion. It's just a field spell. And the favorite contact being able to summon the Wingman. Let's read the Wingman real quick here. This will be the non-target destroy. On special summon, destroy cards your opponent controls up to the number of different attributes among monsters on both sides of the field. Let's go. Max C in the standby phase. We're going to carefully play this. Equipping to the back row of the field spell, our flame burst. Poplar on summon is going to activate to search our deck. We're going to activate the pop a card in the field, chain mass change to it. So whatever we pop on the field will not be sent to the grave. Chaining Ash to the Wanted Seeker. You will not be searching for a Diablo Star. What are we popping? So we're going to summon the Dark Law with the DPE. Then we're going to pop two cards on the field here. Mash Change and the Flame Burge. Flame Burge getting banished. It does not trigger when banished here. Wonder Driver recycling a card from the graveyard because you added a card from your deck to the hand that will trigger the other effect of Dark Law to randomly banish a card from the hand. Now, can the original Sinful even be activated with Dark Law on the field? Let's read that. Send a card to the graveyard as a cost. You can't pay the cost with Dark Law, so it's not even activatable. Do we instant win or what? Banishing the Poplar to link into a Link Karibo, which doesn't really do anything. Our original's not activatable, so it's not even lighting up. End phase, we're gonna pop two cards in the field. Yeah, I think that's pop two. On summon, goodbye Link Rebo, goodbye field spell. But if you leave up the field spell, they can't use in permanence, so we leave it up on purpose. Let's go. I told you heroes have a pretty good turn one. That is what I'm talking about. Now, did he get lucky by opening up Mass Change? Yes. But you could search Mass Change by using DPE to pop the Wake Up Your Elemental Hero, which we saw in the field, which was used for a Fusion Summon instead. By popping it, it will then summon the Shadow Mist to then search for a Mass Change to pretty much do the same thing. And Floodgates generally being tied to the monsters are seen as more addable than just willy-nilly, I flip up Skill Drain, you don't have MST, you lose. Come forth, Elf. Elf Reborn, our Jet Synchron, and holy moly, do we have a nice turn. We have untargetable Flame Burge, untargetable Formula Synchron, summoning the Masquerade to Lincoln off during the opponent's turn, being able to make a Baron to floor, making room for the Elf to make another card untargetable. Let's go. In with Maxi. Ferris is here discarding a hero to special summon from the hand by chaining the formula synchron to the flame burst. We ensure that the mascarina will be untargetable when it activates. Very nice. Baron to floor, also untargetable. Can't target, can't target. And we got that negate. So the Ferris is going to be activating to equip into the back row. The trigger effect of Flame Burge is protecting the Ferris from being negated by Baron to floor. You'd have to say no to your Flame Burge in order to negate the Ferris. 
We're triggering our field spell off of the Ferris Summon to reborn from our back or our own Flame Burge. Come forth. And then we're going to summon a bunch of level ones. We have Oak. We have Ash. We are able to activate the Ash and the Oak. This feels like cheating. This is only activatable because you could add the card to your hand, but then on the resolution, you summon it instead, which is an illegal activation, but because on resolution you could add it instead, we're going to make room for its summon before it resolves. It's just like, this just does not feel right. Link Haribo followed up. Uh, did we forget to Mascarina? Did we Mascarina? Did I miss Mascarina activation? Increase being chained. We're also then chaining the Mascarina, so we're not going to be able to use whatever the elf is able to summon. So we're using the elf instead making a giant four material indestructible by card effect of Poly USA, Quadra Negate. This is where the elf reborns the formula Synchron, which is activatable again, but to summon what? What, what could we even Synchro summon into? Do we, we don't have a way to get a level six in the field to make a Bora load. Negate, the increased effect of summoning a Vine from the deck. That's a huge effect to negate. I would say if you have Ash, that's the effect you Ash. Draw Lockbird, further stopping you from adding any more cards from your deck to your hand, which is a core part of Heroes. So the deck does fold to a Draw and Lockbird. Thrust can't add to the hand. It's going to have to set into the back row. Despite not even being able to add a card to the hand, we're going to negate. We'd have to set it into the back row, and it would only be activatable on the next turn. Now, favorite contact. Is this even usable if we didn't do our core combo? We Nothing banished. We, we got a... We have an elemental hero, Neos, in the graveyard. Let me see the wingman real quick before we get excited on this being a disruption or not. The wingman states, a wingman fusion monster must be used for the fusion summon, and that wingman fusion monster is in the extra deck. Thus, the favorite contact is nothing, is what I'm thinking. Summon a fusion from your extra deck that mentions hero monster as material, ignoring its summoning conditions. What can we summon off of this that's good? We could summon an Infernal Rage, but that's not going to be Disruption. Well, let's just see what he does. We have Diablo Star, putting into the back row our original Sinful Spoils. We're discarding a card to summon our Jet Synchron. Synchroing into our Boralode Savage Dragon. It can summon DPE. Okay. Is favorite contact including your hand? It is, yep, hand, field, graveyard, and or banish. So DPE is exactly what we're summoning. Yep. DPE is the way. DPE, <laughs> like, the Bora Load's gonna be able to negate it on the resolute. By the time we could even activate DPE, Bora Load could then negate, Apollo can negate, and then if we activate it and it gets negated, the Divine Incarnate then tributes it and summons. It's nuts. Let's go to game three. Now, Heroes gets to choose to go first or second. A lot of people, at least initially on the release of Heroes, a hero player would choose to go second, uh, nearly always. But with all of the new support, I think he's definitely going first. What the heck is that? <laughs> that is not a good turn one hero hand, huh? Okay, uh, ending our turn with no play. We got Bell, Ash, and Max C. So when do you Ash? I would say to not Ash and Ash, I would rather Ash the Ash effect of tributing itself or Ashing the Oak effect from tributing itself. I think that's much better use of it. But if you have Impermanence, that's when I would Impermanent Ash. So it's a bit different of Ash versus Imperm. The Ghost Bell, you could be in a situation where the Flame Burge could be Chain Link blocked, but usually, uh, you know, let's just say this real quick. I want to pause this. So what you would do is with the Ash, you would send Flame Burst to summon Oak. Flame Burst would be Chain Link 1. Oak would be Chain Link 2, blocking the bell. But if they have a Flame Burst on the field and they send it to the graveyard for Mascarina, it's not Chain Link blocked. Then you can negate it with bell. So I guess you're just hoping they don't Chain Link block the Flame Burst to use your bell. Oak would generally be the card that Chain Link blocks it. So I guess belling the Oak in this circumstance I don't know if I, uh, I... I guess if he reborns, he's going to be summoning a negate anyway. He could go into a Bora load, which would be a way to stop the bell. It, there you go. Just like that. Perfect Ash. 
save the ash for the oak or ash effect of sending itself to the grave to summon a monster from the deck. And then this is where we would have wanted to use our bell, uh, more ideally, to negate the burge effect. Come forth. We are going to be linking this off into the Hida. Hida could steal the opposing ash. This is turn two, by the way. So can we get AK damage on the field? Promethean plus Reborn a level one, I think, is game. Yep, <laughs> that's anything, actually. Flame Burst is game. Field spell boosting up the Poplar. And just like that, heroes have fallen to a uh, brick. I, you know, we can't really say they lost to Snake Eyes. They lost to themselves. Damn. All right, it was a good effort. Valiant effort, my friend. Thank you. I was rooting for the deck. I don't really root for the players, but, you know, I wanted to see her heroes go all the way. Thank you to Fictinium. Thank you to you for the great duel. Let's hop in another match. Draw phasing our Diablo Star ad with the wanted to play around a draw. That is ideal. Poplar grabbing our Snake Eye Field. So I'll speed this up. Wait, wait, wait. And we are waiting to activate the... Did we already flame? Oh, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, never mind. We are activated to put in the back row, okay. Wanted in the draw phase, get searching. And we got our pot of E, which must be our first activation within the main phase. The flame burge now protected from an impermanence is going to be summoning that mascarina onto the fields. And I believe Sheriff is not playing the furniture version of Labyrinth. It's more heavily floodgate focused. We are going to be mascarina -ing into the Apollo USA so that we could disrupt a normal summoned Ariana on summon. Otherwise, we would not be able to. So make sure on the resolution to do this. Summoning from the graveyard with the effect of the flame burst, the ash, which will add poplar, which will add. We add a poplar, we could summon it onto the field. Yep, yep, yep. Adding an oak. And the Lord of Heavenly Prison protecting our back row cards from being destroyed. As we now attempt to summon a lady, it does not get destroyed. So we just make them lose a negate. And we also didn't bother negating the Lord of Heavenly Prison. Okay. Very nice. Link Karibo during the end phase, tributing the Poplar, triggering the Poplar to equip a card into the back row. Very well done. Welcome, Labyrinth, with the Labyrinth Field Spell and a Daruma. What is going to happen here? We're going to flip down the Ash, then send the Link Rebo and Apollo to the grave. The Welcome Labyrinth will then be able to pop any card on the field. If we pop the Ash, it will trigger Lovely to then pop another card in the field or in the hand, which will Gia knock during the combo. And the Curry card will then be activatable to tribute the Lovely. I mean, this is going to get crazy. Okay, all right, yep, flip, send, summon. Did not summon Lovely. I don't know if I agree with that. Taking out the field spell, okay. Summoning the lady with the effect of the labyrinth by activating a non-labyrinth trap. So we still have big welcome to summon a Lovely. All right, focus. These ladies have not activated, so the curry car cannot tribute over them. Now we're whipping out the big welcome and we want to change the big welcome to stop the lady from activating to the big welcome to set any trap from the deck, which we don't have a way to do. So it looks like I guess we wanted to use our finger on something that is not fingerable in the grave. So we couldn't do that either. Return back the lady trigger. The lovely, lovely will now pop any card on the field or in the hand. Oh, we're also activating the Promethean princess in response to the summon of the lovely. And okay, the lovely will be popping a card here. Link Karibo is using the monster that was targeted by the Promethean, taking out the Diablo Star and goodbye to the lovely as we now have a Promethean princess during our own turn being triggered so we can activate its effect to now reborn a fire monster from the grave. Return back in the deck our original sinful spoils, but through the effect of the wanted, so it's a random draw. Reborning with Promethean, our Flame Burge, using the Ash and Promethean to send to the Grave to summon a Poplar from the deck to grab an original Sinful, which we have already activated this turn. Now making Dark, Dark to steal a monster from the opponent's graveyard, but if we summon a Spellcaster from the opponent's grave with the Ice Dragon Prison, we could banish the Dark plus the Diablo Star, be gone off the field. Oak on summon, summon an Engrave or banished monster. We have Ash, Ash, add an Ash. That was our normal summon. Oak send Flame Burge and itself to summon an Ash to trigger the Flame Burge to summon up the two monsters from the grave. We now have Jet Synchron. 
Lady is now here. When are we using Torrential Tribute? On summon, destroy the field. I think we have to do it now. If we don't do it now, there's a Baron to floor. Huh? Oh my gosh, we didn't make Baron to floor. Wait, uh, is this newly set or something? Okay, okay, uh, correction, correction. I'm getting too excited for a card that's not activatable uh, when uh, they pretty much just lose this duel. Now, the ladies cannot be targeted. No target. Spin that non-activatable Torrential Tribute. <sighs> Please, I want to see Torrential activate. Torrential deserves an animation also. Access code talker. The lady is targetable. There's no set card in the field protecting it from being destroyed or being targeted. It just like that lethal damage. Very nicely done. Very nicely done. Lady set torrential, thus it was not activatable unless we discard a Ku Clock, which would then make it activatable. Otherwise, if set through trap tricks, which would also another way to make it activatable. Pot of P limited to one, but we still have it in our opening hand, revealing a giant ball. So maybe we're gonna, oh, multiple balls in our main deck. What the heck? There's no side deck in this event. Troll, which we weren't gonna add any more cards anyway. So what are all the cards here? The Torrential, in a lot of ways, this card misses the timing if the monster summon happens on chain link two or higher. So you do wanna keep that into consideration. The Rivalry will lock them into uh, Pyro, okay? That's maybe not too big of a deal. If you could have the Field Spell plus a bunch of Pyros, then attack for game. The Trap Trick could grab any normal trap from the deck, make it activatable that turn, but then you could only activate one trap for the rest of the turn. So you've got to use this pretty much as your last activation. The Big Welcome, uh, okay, we could Big Welcome plays here too. Poplar on summon, searching for our original Sinful. Link this off into a Link Haribo, flipping up the rivalry, locking them into Cybers only. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> Not cool. Damn. Cybers, Link Haribo only. How do we out that? You, we, we would have to set another monster, and then we would have to tribute set our Flame Burge over the Link Haribo. Or hope that the opponent declares an attack to then tribute the Link Rebo to reduce the attack to zero. That's another way to get rid of it. Just hope your opponent deals with it, which they're probably going to on the next turn. But yeah, this is the Floodgate variant of Labyrinth where uh, they're not playing the furniture cards. Instead, they're more heavily focused on the Floodgates. And I blame the game, not the player. If this is an effective strategy, I do want them to be playing it. Got lovely. We now can't chain two traps. We could chain to the lady if we had something activatable. Lady's gonna set a card from the deck. We got Daruma Cannon. We're gonna summon a body, return the body, trigger the lovely, pop a card on the field or in the hand. Welcome Labyrinth also being triggered. Lady not being triggered. It is just special summonable, but in defense only. We may get Nibiru'd. So we're on summon one, two, three. Uh, oh, some four, right? This is four summons. Are we linking? Oh, this is five summons. Am I right or am I wrong? Five summons. Uh-huh. Oh boy. Six summons? <laughs> Wait. Could we not Nibiru? What? What do you mean you can't rivalry with Nibiru? He's got nothing on his fields. Oh, you can't change their field of non fiends. It's, oh my god. R really? Wait. Accepted fate? He summoned Lady last turn? They're locked into fiends. Opponent's field counts? What are you talking about? Is it because of the token? I mean, you don't have to summon the token. Isn't the token. Wait, I guess it is because of the token. Wait, what? Is that really real? Nibiru versus Rivalry? I'm going to look this up after this duel. Token's not optional, right? But, oh my gosh, that's so stupid. Poplar's a face-up back row. How does that count? All right, wow, awesome. Uh, let's see this real quick. There could be only one is face-up, and there's a face-up rock monster in the monster zone in this situation, and uh, they summon five times. Can I activate Nibiru? The effect of Nibiru special summoning itself a rock from your hand to your field, then special summoning a rock to your opponent's field. Therefore, you cannot Nibiru. 
<laughs> oh my gosh! What the hell? Well, we are ending our turn because we are the best deck. We are mostly comprised of hand traps plus one card combos. We now have more called by the graves in our hand. Just exactly what we needed here. Lady returned back to the hand and summoned itself onto the field. We are within the end phase here of this max seed drawing a card for us. So even if we draw our one card combo, no good. We have Diablo Star, which is our one card combo. That also works, but again, we're in the end phase. We're activating Daruma just to chain the lady. That's interesting. <laughs> you could recycle Daruma with a lovely labyrinth anyway, sure. Flip up our lady. We got the Labyrinth Field Spell, which can now non-target pop any card in the field. We're gonna hit him with the Max C again. Back to back Max C. The lovely, I do believe, will recycle. Uh, I mean, we, recycling Big Welcome could also be good. Keeping Big Welcome in the grave for the other part of its disruption is also good. So we actually, in fact, hell, uh, double Daruma, really? That's kind of overkill. Uh, maybe we'd want to set a regular Welcome instead over a second copy of Daruma. Imperm onto the lovely lady, chaining to the Imperm to set a trap from the deck that will not be activatable to turn it set. If you have good eyes, you could see the Shadow Mist uh, indicating that the card's activatable. So no Mist, not activatable. One for one, must discard a monster to summon a level one. We got Ash on summon, activating, grabbing a Poplar from the deck, triggering to summon itself onto the field, activating to search our deck for Daruma flipping the whole field face down. Everything face down. Flip, 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 flip. Now, the Diablo Star could work with a face down monster. We could send the pop bar to the grave to summon. We tribute summon for Nibiru. <laughs> what? Goes in match being activated, locking them into light monsters only. But Nibiru is bigger than Lady's defense. It is even with the attack, which we're gonna have to go even with. Fingering the lovely early, ain't no way. Just get her out of the grave early. We don't want to deal with her just like that. So I think the fear was that if we activate called by, they chain big welcome to summon lovely. We then chain our second called by to the big welcome. And that was the way to deal with it. If we set both of our called bys early, they would then end phase big welcome. And then our called bys would be no good. So I do agree with this play. I think it was a good one. Flipping up that lady using the effect of the big welcome to spin any card on the field back to the hand into lethal damage. And that was all public knowledge. Nothing new was introduced to that turn, which led to lethal damage. So that should have been fully predicted. The question is, could we have done anything about that? Now, Diablo Star, because the, you know, the goes and rivalry rulings, Diablo Star can't send Nibiru to summon because uh, Yu-Gi-Oh rulings. You can't attempt to summon a different attribute. You can't send a light to summon a dark with rivalry on, or the Gozen on the field, that is. All right, let's get to it. Arius, please. You just saw Labyrinth win and you want more support? Are you freaking kidding me? We have our wanted in the draw plays pl playing around the droll. Lincoln off into a Sprite Elf, giving us the untargetable protection. And just like that, we can go into Baron to Floor, plus summon the Mascarina. Let's do it. Flame Burst cannot be impermanenced here. The Mascarina can. So we are doing this in the draw phase. The way to keep the Mascarina protected from an impermanence would be, you'd have to Formula Synchron with the Flame Burst so that the Mascarina could be summoned to where the Elf is pointing to. But then we can't do that in the draw phase. Uh-oh, we got the Valent World Field Spell here, which is going to be having us go right into our Baron to Floor play. Flamebird's being triggered to summon up to two level one fires from the Graveyard. Poplar being triggered, Ash also adding. Ash could add a Poplar, which will then summon another body onto the field. We're gonna grab a Curry Kara Divine Incarnate to be used next turn, plus our original Sinful. We have Performa Pal, Pendulum Sorcerer, plus our Duelist Alliance searching for another Iris. Iris into the back row alongside the Performa Pal, using our Valent World Field Spell to summon our Pal from the back row onto the field. We're gonna be using Mascarina and the Sprite Elf to go into a giant Apollo USA 
an untargetable one, which will then negate the activation of the Performa Pal Sorcerer on Summon to pop our back row to then search for one card. Negate. This is a pretty good negate. This is an important one. Okay. To battle we go. Big enough to take out the Sprite Elf. We still have the Omni Negate of the Baron to Floor, which we're going to have to negate the Field Spell from pushing it into the back row. Negate. Okay. Now, uh, does this target, or you just activate it in the same column? Did we have to get rid of Elf in order to activate it? Turn player, yeah, you have to target it. So Elf had to be destroyed in order to push the Baron to floor. Triple Tactics Talent taking control of the Apollo USA. Right when you thought we were done, we have only just begun. You could not veil me because your own Apollo USA will negate. And the Baron to floor had already used up its own negate. Pop our back row, grab an extra deck monster back to our hand, which will be the Astrograph, triggering the Iris on Destruction. Also from a Pendulum Scale leaving, we're gonna be triggering the Electromite to draw a card. And because a card was destroyed, the Astrograph will summon, then search our deck for another card that was destroyed. Our third copy of the Iris, as the Iris grabs a Pendulum Graph from the deck, and we randomly draw into a Purple Poison. Setting up the third, or our second copy of the Iris that is, as we link this up into a Beyond the Pendulum. Beyond the Pendulum, searching our deck for any Pendulum monster as we then Pendulum summon it onto the field. We want to make room for the Harmonizing to activate to summon a monster from the deck, which we do. Now, we're also using the effect of Beyond the Pendulum to pop two cards on the field, chaining the Seeker and the Crossout designate to them being destroyed. We're banishing a Psyframe Driver from our deck just to thin the deck out so we don't just draw into it randomly next turn. Grabbing back our Diablo Star in the Grave to our hand. And let's get Harmonizing into a level 6 non-tuner to make our own copy of Baron to Floor. Very, very good. Get popping. We have 10,000 damage on the field. Pendulum Graph searching for a Wisdom Eye. Remember, Snake Eyes search for a Divine Incarnate to be used next turn. What's the next turn? There is no next turn. Electromite popping again, add back the Astrograph, trigger the Astrograph, come forth and summon, triggering the Iris to also search for the Pendulum Graph. We actually did not trigger the Astrograph, we said no. Now ma main phase two, oh my gosh. Oh yeah, we had to take, oh gosh. If you're not convinced that Elf is good, Elf ate the battle phase. If there was no Elf, the Baron to floor would have been targeted and pushed into the back row in main phase one. We are having another turn because of Elf. If you're not playing Elf, you are wrong. There you go. Not that I wasn't paying attention, it's your fault. We have Wisdom Eye now. Wisdom Eye popping itself, setting up a Black Fang into the back row, special summoning the Astrograph off of the Destruction, grabbing another Wisdom Eye through the effect of the Astrograph, popping the Field Spell to add back the Wisdom Eye. What the heck is going on? We have to give back the Apollo. So we want to find out a way to get rid of it before we end our turn. Reborning a Dark Spellcaster from the grave with the effect of the Black Thing after being destroyed. Copying the effect of Apollo in case you are holding onto a hand trap here, like the Effect Veiler, which we can negate. We're then going into a real Apollo USA. Wait, did we copy Apollo? No, we didn't. Because Apollo has the effect there, you can only control one Apollo. What did this cop- it copied the Electromite. Oh, okay. Wait. Apply the- wait. We- oh, 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 we were popping it, not copying it. Correction. There's too much happening here. This is quite confusing. Baylor, negate the Baron to floor. Apollo USA, negate the negate. Have you ever tried to copy the- Apollo with the Supreme King Dragon, you know what happens? It immediately explodes. Immediately. It dies. All right, let's go. We have one negate with the Apollo, one negate with the Baron de Floor. Activating the Diablo Star, protecting it from being negated by Apollo and Baron de Floor with the Poplar being on the higher chain link. Equipping into the back row our Flame Burge. We also have pop two cards on the field with the Time Pendulum Graph taking out the Poison plus another card. Send the Flame Burge to summon an Oak. Chain link block the flame burst from being negated with the oak. Very good chain link blocks here. Carefully, one by one, protecting our best effects, putting them on the lower chain link. Poplar activating, 
We did not protect the ash, so we would rather have the effect of Poplar go off. Now, the princess is protecting the ash from being negated by being triggered off of a special summon to take out the elf and the Diablo Star. Come forth. So we also had the Diablo Star. We also had the Prometheus, Promethean, Apollo, Baron, Pendulum Graph, Pendulum Graph. Well, purple poison, that is. Apollo, negate. So we are now down to pop one, two, and negate. We have three more disruptions. When are we Baron to Florin? Hida is here. Hida to steal a fire monster from the opposing graveyard. That's going to be using up our negate. We just have pop two cards on the field left. Right? There's no more disruption. Just the pendulum graph and the purple poison. Pop two. And the divine incarnate could tribute the Apollo, tribute the Baron de Floor. This is not looking good for TTK. Dark stealing a dark monster from the opposing graveyard. Come to me beyond the pendulum. As we then link this off into a Link 3 Nightmare Unicorn on summon, discard a card, spin a card in the field back into the deck. Forcing the activation of the Time Pendulum Graph to take out the Purple Poison and the Unicorn and the Beyond the Pendulum. We now have zero disruption. There is nothing left. What do we have? We got nothing. And did we... We already Diablo starred. We didn't Curry Kara yet. We... What? You died. <laughs> no! <laughs> Ash to combo start with our original Sinful? Ain't no way. That, you know, that's full combo. Let's go. Poplar grabbed the field spell. Let's speed this up. We had cross out designate to also protect. Link it off into Link Rebo. Now, Ash could summon Flame Burrs from the hand if we want to. Yeah, uh, you know, it's not that bad. Could have been worse. Are we not playing the Amblo Whale? Probably not. Maybe we just don't have room for it. Summoning the Mascarina during the draw and or standby phase. Special summoning Unicorn triggering the Promethean Princess before it summons, locking you into fire only. It's important to use your Mascarina. Linking off with the Hida, Flame Burge, and itself, or a triple monster negate Apollo USA. Now, we do have Link Rebo in here. Link Kribo is going to be protecting the Apollo USA from being attacked into. Because you destroyed a card, that's going to trigger the Astrograph. And the Astrograph, it's not a hard once per turn and does not get destroyed by the Apollo USA, so it will just activate again if another card is destroyed. Destroyed by battle or card effect, your own card, it triggers the summon. And this card used to not be limited to one. That is wild to think about. We are adding an Ash and an original Sinful, ready for the next turn. As we use the Astrograph for a Pendulum Scale to summon a Stargazer Magician from the deck. Now, I saw in the chat from TTK as we were saying, what's a good way to disrupt Pendulums? Not that you all need a way to do that because probably none of you are playing against one, but if you happen to play against someone like TTK within the tournament, he did verify that ashing the Skull Crobat, I don't think he'd be trolling, right? He said that ashing the Skull Crobat actually is a big deal. So I would say negating this is good. Let's go. Just based off what he said, if he's not tricking us. To battle we go. We did not set up with Link Karibo to protect our other negates. But, uh, you know, there's two attacks threatening the Apollo USA. Electromite is here setting up the Oath Dragon as we now have our Pendulum Sorcerer in the back row popping it to grab back the Astrograph to trigger the Astrograph and the Electromite to draw a random card plus summon and search our deck for a card that was destroyed like the Pendulum Sorcerer. Oh, we are firelocked? Yeah, so that is a thing. But uh, even if even if we weren't firelocked, if there's multiple attacks, it would be an issue of the Link Reba only protecting us from one of them. I did mention the fire lock with the Mascarina, so we were aware of that. Reborn the Electromite, which will now be activatable again. Triggering the field spell on your summon or normal summon to summon a monster from the back row from either side of the field. Grabbing the Oaf Dragon by popping the field spell, linking this off into an elf. TTK with elf, reborn the Electromite again. Recycling with Promethean, recycling with Elf, recycling the Electromite is non-stop. It's now time to Pendulum Summon. 
making room for both of the arrows of the elf to summon as many monsters as we want from the extra deck here. On the summon of the Pendulum Sorcerer, popping two cards to search for two cards. This is getting crazy. Then we are searching for a unicorn. Unicorn searching for a birth. Birth will reborn a cash tier used for a link summon. We are now setting up with our back row fusion summon play. Show conning into an Omni Negate Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon on summon, returning the Promethean back into the extra deck. Promethean popping our back row to then add an Astrograph. Not enough room to summon it though. As we now have Selene Navidad, which could summon a spellcaster from the hand or grave. Remove three spell counters, summoning from the hand or grave, summoning our Astrograph into an Axis Code Talker. 5,300 attack alongside the Cash Tiros and an Omni Negate. We are going to be reborning a Unicorn from the graveyard, going into an Arise Heart into defense. We are in main phase two. How do we keep getting into main phase two? Banishing from the grave, wiping out the back row. Any card that is sent to the grave is now banished instead. The Arise Heart hard counter Snake Eyes. How do you deal with the Arise Heart when there's an Omni Negate protecting the every card being banished? With three materials, we could detach three to then banish any card on the field face down. Using the Odd Eyes Vortex Omni Negate once per turn effect to negate a Link Karibo to then use it again during the next turn. Let's go, let's go. No Link Karibo, suck up a banished Link. Axis Code Talker banishing itself to further wipe up the field here. How do we break this? So the Pendulum Graph alongside a Rise Heart, isn't there a ruling with this? It states that if, okay, if it does not destroy two cards, it doesn't have to go to the graveyard. So this will destroy a card in the field. This will negate. This will banish a card in the field face down and any card sent to the grave is banished instead. We lose, we lose. Is this 2-0? Return. That, okay. Oh, Kurikara actually deals with the Arise Heart. Yeah, Kurikara is the out that the Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon cannot negate. Wow, you'd think that we had the unstoppable field, but we don't because Kurikara is disgusting. Link Karibo tributing the Poplar. The trap is offline, by the way. Yeah, the, the actually the trap has nothing to pop. You have to target a Magician Pendulum Monster in your Monster or Pendulum Zone which we don't have. So the time pendulum graph has nothing to pop. And only because of the snake eyes field spell boosting up curry card to be over 3000 attack, which it should have went even with the odd eyes vortex, but only from that boost were we were able to take it out. And then during the end phase, we could steal the arise heart. Would we want to steal that? What are we taking control of with the divine incarnate during the end phase? Snake Eyes, Flame Burge, come forth and summon, put a card into the back row, putting the own elf into the back row as we yoink the Arise Heart from the opponent's graveyard during the end phase. Every card being sent to the grave will now be banished. Now, it doesn't have the quick effect to banish a card in the field face down, unless at least three cards get banished. We just stole the elf by putting it into the back row with the Flame Burge, then you summon trigger in the field spell to steal your back row monster to put it on our field. Okay. We have one material on the Arise Heart. Now we're gonna have two materials because you triggered the Unicorn to banish a card from the extra deck. One more banish, and then we have the quick effect to banish any card on the field. Setting up the Purple Poison, which could be used with the Time Pendulum Graph to take out and banish the Flame Burst Dragon, giving the Arise Heart the third and final material, but the Purple Poison chaining to the activation of adding the third material, it does get destroyed. We're going to be reborning a non-exceed cash tier with the effect of the birth. They were very careful to add that clause to it, allowing you to not reborn in a rise heart. Holy moly, this back and forth duel is absolutely insane. The problem is we did not really end up on any good disruption beyond the Fen rear. Let me double check this time pendulum graph nonsense. You have to target a magician pendulum. So this is not a magician. This is not a magician. So this does not pop anything on the field. We just have Fenrir. After the resolution of a monster effect to banish a card on the field face down. Okay. Diablo Star big enough to take out the Fenrir. Diablo Star does not activate the summon itself. It's an inherent special summon. Unicorn does get triggered though off of the resolution of the Ash to look at the extra deck to banish a card face down. 
which we should take a gander at. We just lost Axis Code Talker, we lost Unicorn, we have Link Karibo banished face down. Dark can steal a dark monster. You wanna know it's dark? A Rise Heart. We're stealing a Rise Heart again? No, we're taking an Axis Code Talker instead. Your monsters are mine. Banishing from our graveyard, Napoli USA to wipe out the back row. Banish again from the graveyard, taking out the unicorn. Banish again from the graveyard, taking out the back row uh, fusion summoner effect card. As you then further link this off into a Celine Navidad. With three spell counters, we could remove three to reborn Diablo Star. Diablo Star from the grave has to be summoned into defense though. Activating on summon, setting up a wanted to be used during the next turn. Original Sinful sending Selene to summon a Jet Synchron from the deck to make a Borload Savage Dragon to equip the Selene Navida to get boosted up and give it triple negate. Now it can only negate once per turn though, but it's at 3925. Banish Selene, wiping out the back row, <laughs> ending the turn. Holy, oh, he didn't equip the Selene because we wanted to banish it. So very care, since we already banished a dark, we could not banish the dark again. We didn't banish a light, so we were smart enough to equip the correct monster in the graveyard, not being the Selene. Wanted searching for Diablo Star. How is this duel real life? What has, this is turn seven? What is going on? We stole an elf this duel. We stole an Arise Heart. The Arise Heart then got outed after we initially outed an almost unoutable board with a Rise Heart plus an Omni Negate. And then it all comes to an end, pushing this into a game three. Can we agree? Justinian has successfully avenged himself from timing out. All is forgiven on that game one timeout. Let's take this into game three. Ben, rear, open up. You did not maxi early. Searching for our unicorn. We got the Skull Crobat searching for the Performa Pal Sorcerer. Now we're going to hit you with that maxi. Ben, rear, banish. And pop two cards with Pendulum Graph. It's about five disruptions here to play through. Starting off with the Wanted Seeker, grabbing a Diablo Star. We didn't go for a Rise Heart. Nope, uh, should we have tried to force that? Discard for the Diablo Star, activating on Summon, setting up into the back row, an Original Sinful. Wanted returning from the Graveyard back in the deck, Original Sinful for that draw. We have not used up any of our disruptions yet. To battle we go to protect the Apollo USA. We're gonna pop the purple poison and the Diablo Star to then trigger the purple poison to then activate Gamma in response to the purple poison from popping a card, which will then be negated by Apollo USA, which will then also be triggering our Astrograph to summon onto the field. So from five disruptions, we now have three. We have two monster negates and the Fenrir banish. The Gamma is not a hard once per turn, it's activatable again. So as long as we have no monsters on the field and we activate something that then results in them activating, we would be able, ooh, that is crazy. Original Sinful triggered the birth as the non-turn player, thus making you the higher chain link after you target with the Oak, targeting a monster in the grave, but we are banishing it face down. Oh my. This is public knowledge. No new information was revealed. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then the Fenrir just banishes you off the field. We still have two more negates. Gamma not activatable as we are left with one more negate. Wow. That birth was a secret disruption. We said he had five disruptions, but the birth was the secret sixth disruption. Wow. Begin. Got our one card combo plays, Inherent Special Summon, so we can't respond to it with Max C. Setting up into the back row, our Wanted, since we already have the original in our hand. Send Chain Max C if you want to play into a Gamma, which we don't want to get gamma so we're, again, we're waiting with the Max C. Are we chaining Droll? Nope, we're chaining the Max C. Now, Droll shuts off your own Max C, so we want to be careful with that Droll, but what I, I commented on this previously in other tournaments where a lot of players are activating their Max C 
in the same activation window of Droll and Lockbird so that if the Maxi gets ashed or called by the Graved, we could then on top of that Droll after they negate or in response to the negate. I'm, I don't like playing fighting games because I'm not good enough to play them optimally. That That's the main reason why I don't like them. I did like Super Smash where I, I was playing in some tournaments with Snake and I was abusing the legal cheating slide. Like the trick on the GameCube controller, you would slide and you would uh, be shooting the missile and sliding. And then of course they fixed that. Now, we are activating our fusion deployment to come forth and summon from the deck. But first we're gonna be using the Druid Swarm, banishing the Diablo Star from the grave. Come forth, making the Albaz to fuse with the Mascarina. Get Mascarina. Uh, another good thing if you were not very good at Super Smash was to play the the knight, Gia. What's the knight called? The knight that spins. And you just spam B and you just spin to win. Flamber's Dragon being summoned from the back row with the effect of the field spell in response to your summon. We have a non-target monster banished with the Mirror Jade. Yes, Meta Knight. We have Branded Fusion getting negated by Ash, but we have Mercurier to negate the negate. Negate! What are we summoning alongside our Mirror Jade? Are we going into a Sanctifier Dragon play potentially? Yes, we are. Sending Albaz and our Cartesia. Flamebirds attempting to summon the Ash from our back row, which we are successfully going to do, but we're going to get banished in the process. Goodbye. Come forth, Ash. A, a fighting game I really wanted to get good at. I didn't really try to put the effort into. I just already feel like it's not possible for me to be good at it would be the Dragon Ball Fighter Z, which is probably the coolest looking fighting game I've ever seen. I heard they added in a what one button mode to do combos. Is that something that's real that I could do? I actually own the game. I have probably less than an hour played though. Searching for a Diablo star within the end phase, setting up a branded in red. How much disruption do we have during the next turn? The mirror jade is turned off. So we do want to keep that in mind. But with the Albion, we could summon an Albaz from our graveyard to fuse with the opposing field. That's one disruption. We could then disrupt the fusion duplication, copying the branded fusion. We then disrupt again with the branded in red, reborning a monster, or I should say adding it back to the hand to then fuse with. So let's go. Let's see what we can do. Sinful spoils to return the pop or to grab a divine incarnate. We could tribute the field of only monsters that have been activated, which are none at the moment. Got to be careful with that sanctifier dragon. You activate it, I'll tribute it. Monster Reborn Ash. Monster Reborn is really good in the mirror match to reborn your opponent's Promethean Princess, and that's how you're seeing a lot of people play it. Add the Poplar, Poplar Trigger, come forth and summon, grab another original Sinful Spoils. We're going to be linking this off into a Link Karibo. Reminder, the Mirror Jade is not activatable here. Sending the Poplar in itself to summon a Flame Burst from the deck with the effect of the Ash. Flamebirds could push a monster on the field to the back row. We're going to copy our branded fusion with the duplication. Ghost Bell is negating the duplication effect of banishing branded fusion. Damn. You can't ash the fusion duplication. It's not possible, but you could Ghost Bell it instead. We're going to follow up with the other disruption, as we said, with the, the branded in red, adding the Albaz to fuse with two cards on the field. Now, this is a problem. The Ash can negate the Chimera if we don't chain link block it. Did we activate and do we have anything to chain link block with? So multiple trigger effects on the same chain. Druid Swarm would be activatable, which needs to be the higher chain link so it does not get ashed. Field spell triggering. Chimera triggering. Ash blocking. Druid Swarm can't trigger because it got banished. Only if sent to the graveyard from the field, so we uh, could not do anything about this, unfortunately. That does suck. We could not block due to uh, what I said, it being banished instead. Triple Tactics Talent is going to non-target take control, activating Albion, knowing that there's a Divine Incarnate to then tribute over the Chimera and the Sanctifier. Snake Eyes taking an epic Game 1 victory. Power World, I macroed an auto run. So the macro would hold down the W key by just pushing the macro once, and then uh, Gia would have to sit there to fly to a base, and I would just go to the bathroom, come back. 
Drusorm is here. Banish from the grave. Come forth with Mercury. You're making a Verte Anaconda. Send from the deck to Fusion Summon. All under a Maxi. Sending the Anaconda itself plus the Albaz to make our Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade is here with the non-target monster Banish. And we have the Triple Tactics Thrust to thrust a duplication into the back row. Generally, the card is used if your Brand of Fusion gets ashed, and then you have the duplication to copy the Brand of Fusion during the next turn. We're going to draw phase wanted, grabbing the Diablo Star. What plays are we going to be making here? We're going to use up our normal summon into adding our Poplar. Poplar trigger special summon. Activate to add the field spell. And we're going to be using Super Poly right here, right now, fusing the Ash and Poplar before the Ash activates, before the Link Karibo gets summoned into a Garura. Okay, we still have non-target monster banish. We still have copy branded fusion. We have about two disruptions here. We are discarding the Betrayal or our Diablo Star, setting up. So what's interesting is this has a secret effect. If your opponent activates in response to your Diablo Star or Sinful Spoil, you could banish this from the graveyard to negate that effect. Will that actually happen? Maybe? Uh, well, I would love to see it. I have not seen that happen yet. We have Albion being summoned in response to the summon of the Diablo Star, triggering the field spell to special summon from our back row in Ash. Using from the graveyard, banishing Albaz and Jurasorm for a Borlode Furious, which may be chained in response to the Sinful Spoils. No, <laughs> I think we know better. We're not going to allow them to negate with the Sinful Spoils of Betrayal. We're going to summon an Oak. Oak is going to on summon, not activate. We're using the Flame Burst to Reborn 2 from the graveyard. I think we only had two level 1 Fires, I believe. Into a giant Underworld Goddess. Using the opposing player's Mirror Jade, of course it is activating to wipe out the field during the end phase. Now, the Goddess states that it is unaffected from activated card effects unless this card is targeted. So the Mirror Jade non-target wipe still affects it because it's not an activated effect, it's a lingering effect. And we got Divine Incarnate, 6,000 damage plus the boost of the field spell. What the hell was that? It was actually, it was 4,500 plus 11 plus the goddess. So 45 plus 3k, 7,500 damage. We needed that for lethal, right? Did we need that? Did the field spell boost actually give us lethal? I don't know what their life points was at, but damn. Holy moly. I, I don't think it was needed. It was. I'll just take your word for it. Wait, 2-0? That's, that's done. It's done. It's done. What? Top four, top four. Lord of Heavenly making our back row cards indestructible, not setting a trap trick because we already have one on the fields. We got the Daruma Cannon, which could flip the entire opposing field face down. We're going to use Welcome Labyrinth to summon from the deck a Lady. Lady could chain to our own trap to set a new trap from the deck to be usable during the next turn. Okay. Poplar on summon, searching for our field spell. Field spell setting up the flame burst into the back row, discarding a Jet Synchro to summon our Diablo Star Black Witch. On Summon, Activate, set up into our back row and original Sinful Spoils. Now we're going to flip the whole field face down. Now we're going to Chain Link, block the Lady from being able to set a trap from the deck by negating her effect. And she's also, oh, she's untargetable. So non-target, negate. And because we didn't send a trap, we could Chain Trap Trick, then Chain Lady to the Trap Trick. Not doing it. Not doing it. All right, flip the whole field face down. We could use this on a face-up card only, sending the face-up flame burst to summon an ash from the deck. So what are we waiting with the trap trick for? Maybe a big welcome? Set up big welcome and uh, okay, we're also Lord of Heavenly Prisoning onto the field. Okay, come forth. Big meat, setting a card from the deck. With the effect of Lord of Heavenly Prison, setting up a Torrential Tribute to also be used. The Trap Trick uh, only allows the newly set Torrential to be used, right? You could activate the trap the, that you set from the deck, but not the new trap set with the Lord of Heavenly Prison. And what happened is we are on Chain Link 1, right? We're, we're resolving this backwards. Chain Link 1 is resulting in a special summon, so we could Torrential. 
but we're gonna wait on that. <laughs> Massive torrential, wiping up the entire field of tiny monsters, re-equipping the flame burst into the back or the effect of the poplar being sent to the grave, using wanted to return the original sinful to then draw a card, discard the oak, reborn the jet synchron, poke for 1600 thanks to the boost from the field spell. Now, is Victinium screwed? The Flame Burge will summon off of us summoning, which will be triggering the field spell to summon the Flame Burge, which will not be giving us disruption. So off of that, we can trigger the field spell to summon a Flame Burge, sure. And if the Flame Burge is sent to the grave, it will reborn two level one fires. All right, welcome Labyrinth, because a monster left the field through a trap effect, we get to reset. Summoning Ariana to return to then summon to then add the Labyrinth Field Spell, which will give the Labyrinth Traps the ability to pop cards on the field, getting rid of the Link Karibo by attacking into it. Now, Dragonite's Prison is going to be quite interesting, as it could summon a monster from the opponent's grave, then banish the same monster on the opposing field of the same type, using the Labyrinth Field Spell to take out the opposing Field Spell on the summon of the regular Lady. We are now using our Diablo Star to discard the Flame Burst from the hand, triggering its effect. So what should we do with our Ice Dragon Prison? It could summon, uh, it does not target. So we don't know what to steal from the graveyard with the Dragon Ice Prison, but we're gonna do it anyway. Oh, we're taking Flame Burst to banish a Flame Burst. It doesn't stop its effect, but it, Gets rid of both Flame Burges. They only play two, and they're now banished. And there's no way to get them back. Yeah, the Oak will return or summon a banished level one fire, but not a Flame Burge Dragon. That's it. Gone from the rest of the duel. That should be quite interesting. We still have the Flame Burge effect of summoning two level ones from the grave, so we can still cook. We're not done. Activate the Ash to add. Activate the Oak to summon our banished Jet Synchron. Ariana will draw a card here. Oops, wrong button for subbing for 12 months. Thank you very much for the one-year anniversary, my friend. We have a Daruma Cannon to be used during the next turn to flip the whole field face down. We have Poplar being triggered to summon from the hand. Trap Trick banishing a normal trap to set a normal trap to then activate that normal trap this turn. You can pop two cards in the field. Are we doing it right now? Or are we waiting? Maybe on the resolution? No, we're waiting, we're waiting. When is the best time to use the Dogmatica Punishment? We're going to force the activation of the Dogmatic Punishment by targeting it to destroy it with our Nightmare Phoenix. Dogmatic Punish will punish the Link to Phoenix by likely sending an Entis to then pop another card in the field. That's exactly what we did. Entis is going to pop maybe uh, the Oko has not activated its effect yet. Neither has the Ash to summon a monster from the deck. We're gonna send Ash to, or we're gonna send to summon to then make a Hida. Big welcome spin any card on the field back to the hand, dealing with the Hida before it summons a fire from our grave. Damn. Labyrinth is clapping up Snake Eyes and no floodgates needed. We're gonna be tributing off now. The problem with this, because you didn't do it at the start of the battle phase with your toggle on, you will still declare the replay and the Link Rebo can't reduce, so you just take more battle damage. Yeah, uh, the Oak would have been 900 attack, so you know, that, that's not a big deal, but just so you now know, start of the battle phase is when you have to Link Rebo. We are not done. We could search our deck for a level one fire by returning the Poplar to grab an at Like, why does the deck have this? Like, oh my gosh, really? <laughs> Full combo. Poplar come forth and summon. Wait, it's not activating. It has nothing left to search. Huh? Daruma is going to send the Link Rebo to the graveyard. Okay. At, you know, the Poplar's not being flipped face down at least. So activate, set into the back row. Regular, the Labyrinth Field Spell is gonna be summoning a Fiend Monster from our hand or grave, which will be a lovely from the hand. And uh, we're in trouble. Uh, yeah, I think we lose. There's nothing we could really do. Is there a big welcome in the grave? We don't have that. We got a bunch of big mamas on the field here, recycling our Daruma from the grave pot of pee. Reducing our damage. Okay, don't reduce your damage, I negate. Just beat me, mate. Trying to prolong the duel. I do consider that to be BM. 
Hey, now we did it. Start of the battle phase, reduced to zero, but I mean, we still lose. Lethal damage. Thank you, Fictinium, for negating that, uh, which would have just been prolonging the duel unnecessarily. Let's go into game number two. Three bodies, tribute, using up our normal summon, big ball in the field. It's gonna happen. They're definitely gonna happen. Further link this off into the Sprite Elf, making the Boar Load untargetable, reborning our Mascarina, and also, I should say, putting into the back of our Mascarina, as we now have the Formula Synchron. So what is happening here is, and what do we use the ball for? The ball, the ball, the ball, the ball. If you ball the Formula Synchron and not the Elf, the Elf reborns the Formula Synchron, then synchros with the Boar Load or the Flame Burge to make a Baron to Floor. We don't know. It's already standby phase, and they have not activated the Flame Burst effect to summon the Mascarina. If we ball over the Flame Burst, it then summons two bodies from the graveyard. Ward Main Fate, that's it. The first play we make can be the ball. Elf, Boar Load, Formula, but then Flame Burst could still summon Mascarina. Mascarina and Flame Burst could make, not an Apollo, not that that even is a big deal, but it will trigger the Flame Burst. Woo, that's exactly what we do. <laughs> Ball on the field, triggering the field spell to summon the Mask Arena, which the Flame Burst could have just activated on its own. Wait, the ball is another body, so we actually can make an Apollo USA. Very nice. I can't believe Snake Eyes just got big balled, and I don't think they care. They have Ash, they have Oak, they have summoned the Jet Synchron back in the field. It's now back in the game, no longer banished. Ash could search a Poplar, Poplar could summon, Poplar could then search for an original Sinful Spoils. Does it look like Fictinium got owned? I don't think so. Holy moly, L let's talk about this. What is really good about this? The Solemn Strikes being a counter trap means that most effects are not gonna be able to respond to it. If they had a Boar Lord in the field, this would be able to negate a card and the Boar Lord would not be able to respond. We have the Daruma, which could flip the whole field face down, then send the Apollo. But if the monsters were there previously, they could just flip back up. So uh, the issue with Daruma is it's not gonna be that good. The big welcome with the field spell will pop any card on the field. That could be pretty good. So non-target pop, flip the field and double monster negate. Let's see, let's see. This off. Ooh, the Phoenix will draw a card. We're negating the summon, not the activation. Okay. Uh, should we have negated the activation? You can't negate the activation because they would have chain link blocked with Poplar. So Sheriff was very smart for negating the summon, not the activation, which uh, would not only pop a back row, it would have also drawn a card. Discard, draw, and pop, and protected from the strike. Is this strikeable too? Yeah, like I, that's a strike. That's a strike. You strike that definitely. I think so. Negate. Did uh, we just send a flame burst though? Holy crap. Like what? <laughs> We're two strikes down and they're still swarming the field. <laughs> this is madness. Did we have to negate the flame burst instead? I, I guess we're gonna have a big Daruma cannon coming up. Yeah. Daruma will send the Promethean Princess and the Apollo USA. Yep, th this is when we do it. The Oak was newly summoned. It's stuck face down. Ash is going to negate the big welcome. That is a huge problem for Labyrinth here. Just that Ash, I think, wins the game. We desperately needed that. And are we still cooking? Yeah, we haven't even used up our normal summon. Tributing for Link Karibo, our set monster. Ash send the Link Karibo to summon a Poplar. Original Sinful Spoils, search our deck for an Ash, sure, to be used on the next turn. And, we, you know, we got a nice little baboose with a field spell. Did lose 3,000 life from the Psalm Strike, so now we are at just 1,600 life left here. Oh, that is uh, game over. Our third Solemn Strike. Why does Labyrinth play Solemn Strike? To negate Ash. But when you're playing against the best deck in the game, you can't save your Solemn Strike for Ash. We had to use both of our Solemn Strikes before the Ash that shut down our entire deck. All right, uh, come on, just end this, please. Are we playing around a Drowning Mirror Force? Yes. 
Set this up, come forth and summon, reborn, add back to the hand. We're making a four material Baron to floor negate Link Karibo for game. Damn. Am I cooking so hard? The back row could be Daruma, to be fair. I think Daruma is the biggest impact card that we probably had to play around to ensure we would still win. Pot of E, limited to one, by the way. Don't mind if I do. Draw two, set four back row end. Double Torrential Dogmatica pop two. Big welcome in the draw phase to summon from the deck, then return back to the hand. By summoning a lady before the resolution of the big welcome, we could summon a lovely, return back lady, then pop a card in the hand randomly. If we want to do that, which we're not doing. We're just going to keep Lady on the field, which is completely untargetable and indestructible by card effects. It can be destroyed by battle. Setting up the field spell, setting up an Ash, send the Ash to summon the Diablo Star. Activating, we could chain Torrential if we want to. We're holding. This would maybe be an opportunity to punish, send Entis, pop the original Sinful, which maybe the Phoenix is going to force out anyway. Discard. No, so there you go. We have the Dogmatic Punch. We, we lose a Torrential Tribute. Torrential is now gone. Do we still tur- No, we don't Torrential. Of course we don't, because we don't want to lose our Lady and we're popping the Phoenix anyway. Very good. Entis, Entis, activate afterward. But the Entis could get fingered by the Called By. Okay, and we do have a Daruma that can't be activated this turn, unfortunately. Entis is getting fingered. Negate. The original Sinful Spoils will stay intact. Now, the untargetable, unstoppable lady can be tributed by Kurikara. And I do think we may be planning on doing that to go for game. We have 5,500 damage on the fields, which the Kurikara was a over 8,000 damage. But, you know, there's back row here, the Torrential Tribute. 15 right now. 8,100 thanks to the field spell. But a big fat torrential tribute number two to wipe out the entire field. We had game. Okay, we're still gonna keep on cooking. We have original sinful, summon the oak. We have not activated oak yet. Oak reborn, the poplar wanted, return back in the deck to draw one. If we don't win this turn and we end with three or more monsters on the field, we're going to get big balled. And uh, the Daruma's not activatable, so, you know, maybe we could do something. Stealing the opposing lady, we're at 4850 damage. Promethean Princess, Reborn of Fire from the Grave, which should be our Flame Burge at 3000 attack. Quite large and in charge. Putting into our back row an Oak to summon during the opponent's turn. Just 5700 damage. Dealing damage against Labyrinth. This type of Labyrinth is, they are using their life points as a resource for the Solemn Strike, so that is effective. Did not get more than uh, two monsters on the field to use our big ball with. Daruma is going to flip the Flame Burst, send the Promethean, and also uh, getting rid of our lady here. Sure, uh, I think we screwed that up, huh? We were supposed to let Daruma resolve then summon Lady, not chain Lady to Daruma to then summon and flip face down. Well, we ballin'. We could ball. Yes, the ball is here. Not sending Flame Burge as it would be triggered to Reborn from the Grave. Give Trap Trick. Now, Trap Trick must banish the card to grab another card. So if there's two of a card in the graveyard, like Torrential, we can't grab Torrential. But if we have three copies of Divine Punishment, we could Banish one punishment to grab the third copy. Yep, so uh, Torrential is not in play. But Daruma, is Daruma in play? There's one Daruma in the grave, so if we play three copies, we could grab a Daruma. Daruma or Divine Punishment, I think, will be the big two cards we grab from the deck with the Trap Trick. Black Witch is going to be setting up a Wanted into the back row. Poplar equipping. Original Sinful, send Poplar, summon our Jet Synchron, Trap Tricking Daruma. The third copy of Daruma plays Triple Daruma Cannon. 
Borlo does not a negate on summon, so we could flip it down right now. Flip it down before it turns into a negate. Damn. Now, the Flame Burge was flipped down previously, so we could flip it back up alongside the ball to link it up, trigger the Flame Burge to reborn two level one fires alongside our Mascarina. And it looks like this is the end of Labyrinth. Triple Daruma. I think they're playing Triple Torrential. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see the deck list. They're definitely not playing the furniture cards. Very well done. Good job to you. I think a lot of people are incorrectly saying that you're only doing well because you're playing Floodgates. We could see that's not the case. You are a lot more than just the Floodgates, which you didn't even really draw it in these games. And you did win game one without Floodgates. Zelantis banishing the entire field to then resummon it back onto the field, which will trigger our own Promethean Princess on the summon of your new monster. There it is. But we have Big Welcome to spin it back. Uh, it's still, okay, we could return it back, then resummon it from the hand. But we gotta be careful about that. How do we deal with the Zelantis that will pop it? Yeah, Zelantis still kills it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, wipe out the lady and attack for game. There's nothing we could do about that. The Zelantis would, it, it's not a trigger effect. It's whenever we want within the battle phase. So even if we waited for the last possible moment to summon it, Zelantis still wipes it. All right, good job to both of you. Thank you. Let's uh, wow, uh, lost game one, took game two and three. That is crazy. We have going first with our original Sinful Spoils one card combo play versus no disruption in sight. Let's do it. So the betrayal is no good, but we could still draw into Diablo Star. Again, another opportunity to draw into it. So this will be able to negate any card on the field. And beyond that, we just have Mascarina into probably an Apollo USA. Draw into Diablo Star? Nope, uh, that's not good. We have uh, an Ash though, Alt R Ash. We are going to, we also have Promethean Princess and we're also in addition to the Mascarina. So the Fenrir is choosing to not, oh, okay. So this was the activation of the field spell. So the Fenrir would not be able to activate. We are now going to Flame Burst Chain, summon the Ash. And then after that resolution, the Mascarina will be going into probably an Apollo USA. Yes. Nope, we're going into Goddess. Oh my Goddess, using up the Fenrir right when it would have triggered to banish a card off of the field. But now we don't have Apollo USA for the multiple monster negates. I think that TTK is okay with that play. If a Fenrir forced out Goddess instead of making Apollo, I think that would have been much more disruptive. And again, the Betrayal, no good. So uh, we just have the Promethean. You special summon, we could pop it with Promethean. Ash is going to negate the Duelist Alliance from adding a Pendulum card from your deck to your hand. Negate. Follow up special summon Unicorn, Unicorn searching for a birth, which could birth the Fenrir, which could get negated by the goddess. No. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. We have not used up our normal summon yet. Unicorn being triggered to look at the extra deck, banishing the Zelantis. No Zelantis one turn killing for you. As you now make beyond the pendulum. You know, we do have Nibiru, so uh, we could get ready with that. Our pendulum scales are negated until we perform a pendulum summon from the extra and from the hand chain link blocking the pendulum sorcerer as it destroys two to search two and the harmonizing summons a level six non-tuner from the deck, which will be a Baron to floor. So do we Nibiru on the resolution of this? Yes, maybe, oh, oh, we don't have to because, oh, we all, <laughs> Uh, Promethean does not get summoned, so why did we Promethean? So we just turned off Promethean, and uh, yeah, it just doesn't even summon. Trib it, the Promethean has to destroy something. If it doesn't destroy, it doesn't summon. But I guess we would not have a fire monster on the field anyway, so I guess it didn't matter. Yeah, we already used the field spell, so there's no other way to get a fire on the fields. That's it for our disruption. 
We're gonna use the black thing to destroy itself to then reborn from the grave are beyond the pendulum. 12,000 attack token is now being used to link off into a Selene Navida, which requires a spellcaster to be used as part of the link summon. With a ton of counters, we're gonna remove three to summon a spellcaster from the hand or grave to go into an Axis Code Talker. We're facing off against 6,000 life though, as TTK probably surrendered or not timed out right Yeah, It's just, I, I'm missing 700 damage. 700 off from lethal. The Nibiru killed our turn. Nibiru was good, Nibiru was good. We had the Skull Crobat, which I was told by TTK, ashing that is a great play, that you should be ashing it. Pop in to go into the extra deck, add the Wisdom Eye and not the Astrograph. Wisdom Eye is going to pop itself to set up into the back row a poison, triggering the Electromite to draw a card. Oath will grab back our Wisdom Eye. We're now going to be tossing our Dimension Shifter into the graveyard right here, right now. Why now? Why not wait? Well, this plays around Call by the Grave if they were to have that, so being mindful of that is good. And then the Dimension Shifter will not be affecting us by the next turn uh, when it no longer, the lingering effect falls off. And what we have here is we have an Omni Negate with Vortex Dragon, and we have popped two cards on the field with the Time Pendulum Graph, but I'll just count that as one disruption. So double disruption, and all our cards are banished instead of being sent to the grave, which means cards like the original Sinful cannot be activated at all. Can Ash be activated to send? Send two cards to the graveyard as a cost. So the Ash and Oak summon a monster from the deck effect? Illegal, cannot activate. That's quite devastating, I think so. We're gonna pot a pee, digging deep. What are we digging for? We have Diablo Star. I don't think Diablo Star could even be summoned. Diablo Star has to send a card to the graveyard. Uh, okay. So we can't send to the graveyard. So <laughs> can't Diablo Star, can't Original Sinful, can't Ash effect from the deck. But we can Monster Reborn, your Dimension Shifter. Come to me. You have the Field Spell setting up into the back row in Ash. Ash on Summon is going to be negated and banished by the Odd Eyes Vortex. We still have Pop 2 with the Time Pendulum Graph. Kurikara's here. It's gonna be 4,100 attack thanks to the field spell. We're gonna pop her. We're popping. Popping the poison, which will trigger the Electromite to draw a card, to then further pop the Dimension Shifter, wiping out both monsters and draw one. Sure. To battle we go into ending our turn. We're no longer under the lingering effects of Dimension Shifter. Cards will now be sent to the grave instead of being banished. We have field spell playing over your field spell which means on our summon, it won't trigger your field spell to summon the Ash from the back row, which could add a Poplar, which would then summon itself onto the field. So that was quite disruptive. We're just sitting on Ash. Ash, negate Iris, uh, we're just giving up. I, I think uh, there's nothing we can really do here. What would even be a better Ash at this point? We're negating the ability to grab a Pendulum Graph, which I don't think we really even need. All right, let's clap it up. TTK maybe still has to consider a card like Nibiru before going for game. We have the Selene removing three counters to reborn or summon from the hand a spellcaster. As we set up an Apollo USA to negate that in hand Nibiru that's not actually there. So, you know, great players will still play around potential hand traps before just going for game. This is not wasting anyone's time. This is playing optimally. 7,300 now at 9,100. Even if we were to negate Nibiru, the minus 800 is still over 8K. That is the way. Attack for game, finish him. To game three we go. Print shifter. Yeah, yeah, so what? Let's go to game three. Poplar on summon against zero disruption. Let's speed this up. Uh-oh, Imperm, Nibiru, Ash, plus our regular combos. This is not looking good for TTK. 
Grabbing the Poplar, Poplar Trigger Summon. We are going to be oaking our Poplar back onto the field. Send the Link Karibo to summon a Flame Burst from the deck. We're now making Mascarina to trigger the Flame Burst to reborn two level one fires from the grave. Further linking this up into a Promethean Princess, reborn a fire from the grave. We're going to then link it up into the Amble Whale, then use the Flame Burst to set the Mascarina into our back row. Now back to you. The Promethean will pop a special summon. The Mascarina will be summoned, then go into something like an Apollo USA, which will probably have uh, about three negates. So it's about four disruptions with just this. And then we have the Hidden Impermanence, the Hidden Ash, the Hidden Nibiru. That's seven disruptions versus draw six. Six cards, seven disruptions. I mean, it's like auto win, right? It's easy one for one. Imperm. Negate, that's one of our disruptions. We're now down to six. Okay. Setting up the Black Fang in the Imperm column, that's fine. Ash is going to negate the search for a Pendulum card. We're now down to five disruptions. One of them being a Nibiru. That's the big one. S Normal summon. Will the Beyond the Pendulum trigger the Promethean. Is that enough? Are we doing it? Are we whipping out the Promethean? Th the thing is, we're not getting... If we Promethean early, we then can't Mascarina. Okay, add. We Promethean, Nibiru, Apollo, Triple Negates. We're going to, in response to the birth, activating from the hand, not the activation to summon the Fenrir back yet. Making our Mascarina come out. We still got that five disruptions. Summoning the Fenrir to trigger the Promethean to pop Fenrir and then go into our Apollo USA. So we're going from five disruptions down to four. Wait, this is not... Huh? This is not Apollo USA. This is something crazier. If you summon to where this is pointing to, which the Flame Burst gets triggered to summon to where this is pointing to, all the topologic monsters do something crazy. This will banish all back row cards on the field. Everything be gone. All right, so we just have Nibiru as our final disruption. As the Promethean will trigger it. Also, the Snake Eyes Flame Burst could be another way to trigger it. Manish! The entire back row! Wipe it! Oh, it banishes the Promethean off, okay. And then triggering the Ash and Oak. We got that Nibiru. Nibiru is waiting. On five summons, whenever we want, we will Nibiru. We are on summon one, two, three, I believe. Yeah, three summons, three summons. So three summons to battle we go, taking out the Oak. And the Trisbana could just uh, keep activating every turn. <laughs> I, eh, I want to know what are we using the Trisbana initially for? I I, you know, I like it. I'm seeing a lot. Of, I'm seeing an uptick in Trispanas. I'm seeing the decks. I see the tournament top and deck list. Is it mostly for Labyrinth? I know we're not playing this for Pendulum. Grand finale. Hajime, Snake Eye versus Snake Eye. You know how we do it. We're going to be using our Wanted in the draw phase to play around the Droll in Lockbird, so it is not activatable. But we could chain the Droll to the add of Poplar, it activating to Special Summon. It would, now will not be searching for the field spell that we already have in our opening hand. Out freaking played. A one of, by the way. Set up a flame burst into the back row with the field spell, Poplar into the Link Karibo, and that will be triggering the Poplar to go into the back row, which we're not gonna be activating yet. We have Oak reborning that Poplar, and now we're gonna be using Oak to send the flame burst to summon from the deck our flame burst. It looks like people are, uh, I was gonna say they're chain link blocking with the Poplar. Why are we waiting on the Poplar to equip in the back row? Making a Mascarina after the effect of the Flame Burst being sent to the Graveyard, summoning two level one fires from the grave as we now make our Promethean Princess. Triggering the Poplar to equip into the back row. The okay, people just wanna put Ash into the back row, sure. We're gonna use Promethean to reborn our Flame Burst. And we got double Flame Burst, also equipping into our back row Mascarina. Further linking this up into an Amblo Whale. Whale, whale, whale. Send the Ash to summon the Diablo Star, which I think we play Betrayal. Yes, we do. Betrayal Silvera is here. What do we have here? We have negate any card on the field. We have make an Apollo USA, which will be triple monster negate. 
We have the uh, Promethean Princess, which will pop a special summon monster, plus two hand traps. That's about seven disruptions versus six cards in our hand. Well, actually five, because we used a hand trap, which did nothing. Yeah, that droll really did nothing, huh? So can we play through seven disruptions? Let's see. Uh-huh, we add. Ash on summon, activate, negate. Down to six, six disruptions here. Flame Bear summoning the Mask Arena from the back row onto the field. The Moonlit Chill will be on a special summon, negating that monster on summon. Okay. Sildera with the negate, triggering the Diablo Star to re-summon itself back onto the fields. What are we sending to summon the Diablo Star as we link with the entire field? using the opposing monster to make a goddess instead. So the triple disruption of the Apollo USA is now gone. We now have tr just triple disruption. We have the Promethean, we have the Ash, we have the Moonlit Chill. And you could kind of count the Apollo, I should say the goddess, being able to negate. Wait, where did goddess go? Did we send goddess? Oh my gosh, uh, goddess is gone. <laughs> what? what? Goddess is gone. Goddess negate the ability to reborn from the grave. That's not a thing. So we have Promethean, Ash, and Moonlit Chill. Ash negate the one for one attempting to summon from the deck possibly an Oak. Negate. And now we got Moonlit Chill and we got Promethean Princess. Pop a special summon and negate a special summon. This is what you use Chill for, right? Chill? No, we're actually popping with Promethean. Pop the Black Witch on summon. And now we just got one chill. No chill, no chill. Zero cards in our hand, nothing on the field that we could use the original Sinful with. We need a face-up card in order to send it to the grave to then summon from the deck. We have no disruption in the graveyard. We have 9,000 damage, taking a game one victory. Six disruptions, playing through also a Droll and Lockbird. Game one goes to Lick Sharon. So uh, a question I've been seeing from people is, I have Nibiru, when do I Nibiru? Whenever Lick Sharon activates will likely be the optimal Nibiru. If it's not, we'll talk about it. So we're on summon number one. Add the Poplar, Poplar special summon. We're on summon number two. We'll slow down on once we're closer to the fifth summon. Summon number three, Poplar equip into the back row. And we are setting up summon number four. Ash is now going to send the Jet Synchron for summon number five. Summoning the Poplar from the graveyard here. Waiting, did not Nibiru then. Summoning a Flame Burst. So if we Nibiru then, were we stopping a potential Apollo USA? No, we didn't have enough materials. If we Nibiru now, that will trigger the Flame Burst after the Nibiru resolves to summon two monsters from the graveyard. So I think Nibiruing here, not a good idea. On the resolution, of this Flame Burst summoning two, that could be the Nibiru, which we didn't do. We didn't do. Okay, okay, Formula Synchron, draw a card. Now. So we allowed them to Formula Synchron first, which also, I mean, they could have gone into Apollo if they wanted to, which Apollo early against Nibiru isn't really an optimal line, but I, I don't know from the live gameplay if Fictinium saw their field light up on uh, that summon. Once we had five summons, seeing the field light up, we could then deduce that they probably have a Nibiru, and then maybe we would just, you know, take a hard left turn and make that Apollo USA early to outplay it. Now, the Nibiru does trigger the field spot of summon a Flame Burst in the back row, which is still equipping a Mask Arena. So is Nibiru even really that good against Snake Eyes? Because... <laughs> We still have a good field. We still have disruption through a Nibiru. Nibiru's kind of good, but not really. I, my gosh, we are cooking still. This is wild. We even have Elf reborn the Formula Synchron. I think we had to at least Nibiru before Formula Synchron. I, I, so I think we messed up by one step. We should have Nibiru'd before the Formula Synchron summon. All right, Snake Eyes, Flame Burst, summoning the Mask Arena from the back row within the main phase, chaining the Formula Synchron, making sure that we are able to summon the Mask Arena to make it untargetable under to where the Elf is pointing to. 
putting the elf on a higher chain link to summon so that we could use it as part of, uh, you know, the mask arena. You know, we actually did not have to elf at all here, but why not? Bear into floor, untargetable. Mask arena, untargetable. And then we are now going to be triggering the effect of the flame burst, summoning an oak and an ash. We are under max C, which all of our summonings happening during the opponent's turn here. Chaining the mask arena with the full field of monsters here. So what's gonna happen is we can link off with the oak, making room for the monster that we're targeting to summon it instead of adding it back to the hand. But because we are under max C, maybe we should just add it to the hand and not summon. That's what I'm thinking. Untargetable 3200 attack quadra. We're still summoning the Jet Sync Run under Maxi. Are we crazy? Diablo Star discarding a special summon. Not an effect, a special summon that activates. Did not negate with the Poly USA here. I guess the Jet Sync Run needs to be there for the Link Karibo, which draw two. And the Ghost Bell is going to negate as the Karibo is trying to protect the Apollo. Apollo will protect the protection for Apollo by negating the bell. Makes sense, yes. Summon the Link Rebo, but we have two attacks. Attack number one, okay. Attack number two, droplet in the damage step. As you can see there, sub step two within the damage step is when we used the droplet, forcing the attack to go through still. Triple monster negate, plus a bear into floor negate. We got four disruptions. Negate the Poplar from grabbing the Field Spell as we already have double original in our hand. Linking this off into Link Karibo, triggering the Droplar. And eh, this is not worth a negate with the Poly USA. We're gonna hold on to that. We're then going to send the Poplar, actually negating the Sinful Spoils. But does Sinful Spoils work like Branded Fusion where if you negate the activation, you can activate another one? Probably not because it's a multi-effect card. Most multi-effect cards don't say you can only activate them once. They say you can only use each effect once due to being a multi-effect that gets screwed by Baron to floor. Thus, we can't activate the other original. Oh boy. Set that in perm. Now back to you. We do have the Betrayal activatable to negate anything. We have Imperm to negate a monster. Two disruptions, but the Baron de Floor. Okay, we already used the Baron de Floor negate. Okay, the, let's go. We're gonna get rid of the Baron de Floor. Reborn the Flame Burst from the graveyard. Untargetable by the Imperm, by the way. We can't Imperm or negate. Uh-oh! You can't negate the Flame Burst nor the Apollo. They are both unfreaking targetable thanks to the top tier Elf. Elf is the way. Before we get negated, we're going to be reborning from the grave. Imperm, wow, we're using two cards for Elf. How can you not see how good Elf is? My Jesus. Imperm and Silvera, okay. The Apollo will negate. The Silvera cannot negate Apollo because we already activated one effect of the Silvera. Uh-huh. And we're now going to search our deck for a level one fire by returning the Flame Burst, grabbing the Ash, and there is nothing left. That is it for game two. Let's speed this up. Poplar on add, special summon, grabbing the original Sinful, wanted return, banish Jordan Gray back in the deck to get that draw one. Promethean Princess is here, reborn a fire from the grave. We got the Oak, Oak on summon trigger, reborn the Jet Synchron, even if it were banished. We got the Amblo Whale, Whale 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 into Baron to Floor, which was returned back into the extra deck. Triggering the Flame Burst to reborn the Jet Synchron. Oh, stop, he's already dead, geez. And just like that, lethal damage. So whoever goes first wins. I guess it's that simple. Is that pretty much how every mirror match in Yu-Gi-Oh works? Let's go. Ash, Imperm, Negate. Now, both players having effectively three hand traps in addition to their one card combo plays. And this is why Snake Eyes is so good. You have a bunch of one card combos and then you're filled to the brim with a bunch of other techs. Nibiru's, Imperm's, Moonlit Chills, all that good stuff. Can we play through Imperm, Ash, and Moonlit Chill? Triple disruption, discarding the special summon our Diablo Star. Diablo Star activating, not getting negated, is set up in original Sinful Spoils. We have Ash, which is a great Imperm target. I don't like using Ash on Ash, I think that's bad, but Imperm on Ash is very good. So we have just two disruptions left with the Moonlit Chill and the Ash. 
Ash should be saved. I, ash on the original Sinful, I'd say, is good. Ash on the Oak or Ash to summon a monster from the deck is also good. So we are using that Ash, I would say, correctly. Negate the summon of a level one from the deck, which could have been an Oak. Oak would have been a good one. Reduced to zero on the attack. Now back to you. We have Maxi and Nibiru. One card combo deck off the top of the deck. Why not grabbing the original Sinful? We're on summon number one, going into summon number two, not respecting Gamma. I don't think a lot of people are really playing Gamma. I'd have to check the analytics here. Come forth and summon from the deck into Ash. Three more summons and we could get Nibiru'd. Poplar re-equip from the grave. We could also add from the deck, which is gonna be another Poplar. Uh, are we, uh, we're doing it, we're doing it, we are doing it. Keep on drawing. Summon number four. Uh, am I counting this right? We're uh, on one, two, three, four. Are we Nibiru-able? Yes, we are. <laughs> That's just like that. After giving a ton of cards to our Maxi drop her special summon, you just got nibiru -ed. Diablo Star being sent to the graveyard by our own Nibiru, triggering its effect to send a card to then reborn itself back onto the field to search for a follow-up card. Do we have a normal summon? It, no, we can't normal summon. So Jet Synchron is stuck in our hand. And Moonlit Chill can negate a special summon monster. That could be good, right? Okay, grabbing a Diablo Star from the deck within the draw phase. Normal summon our Ash, Ash. Add Poplar, Poplar summon onto the field. We could negate with the Moonlit Chill, but we probably shouldn't. Grabbing our field spell, field spell set up. A flame version of the back row sending itself, plus the Poplar, the Ash will be summoning from the deck. A second copy of our flame burge. Poplar equipping the Ash into the back row. How do we deal with that 3000 defense token? We push it into our own back row because it's my token. The opponent's token into our back row from our Nibiru into lethal damage. Yes. All right. Very well done from both players. Thank you. Victinium overcoming, not going first through just a maxi impermanent Nibiru. Thank you to both of you. Meta Weekly 100 Snake Eye, six out of the top 16. Ain't no way. Brandon Despia only at two. Everything else is pretty much a random rogue deck just sneaking their way into the top cut as they usually do through any tournament that happens from Yu-Gi-Oh! and all the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! So. I would attribute their success to the players more so than the decks themselves. But Snake Eye, definitely you're seeing this many due to how strong the deck is, in addition to good players playing them. Let's go to the bottom and we'll scroll up real quick and look through the decks. Let's do it. This is, uh, we have 50 card Synchron. Nice to see this. We got some red Rebu in the main. Very nice. 50 cards. Let's look at that extra deck. We have the Crimson Dragon as the only new extra deck card here being newly supported with the Diablo Star engine, which is supporting a ton of decks, thanks to Jet Synchron being really techable. And then I'm really excited for this deck list. This is Infernoble, boom. And uh, I can't really say there's a standard way to play the deck, but without there being a standard way, this looks standard. This is what the Infernoble guide and the website's pretty much fully recommending on how to play the deck. The Infernoble channel in the Discord is pretty much recommending it exactly to be played like this. They're not really big fans of the Speedroid way of playing it that goes into the Invoker, into Isolde. They're also not a big fan of putting Makanko into kind of what is a pure way to play Infernoble. Now, uh, Makanko did win last week, but that wasn't really an Infernoble deck. An Infernoble deck summons Emperor Charles the Great. I think we could all agree on that. And this is good for you to copy. Now that this finally topped the tournament, I think I might make a video guide on how to play uh, this deck list, something like this, with the help of the Discord. So, looking good. And then we have Revelation, my favorite rogue deck, super heavy sand, not a rogue deck, but uh, yeah, the, the thing is, uh, why play this over Snake Eyes is what a lot of people are thinking. It's something could be slightly better than another deck, and that could be enough to just have the majority of good players want to play that deck over something like this. Do I think Snake Eyes is slightly better? I don't think it's slightly better. I think that Snake Eyes is 
a good amount better than everything we have right now. And speaking of branded decks, we have 60 cards looking good. This deck may still get hit by the ban list. So we are on the week of a new ban list announcement, which should be happening maybe on Wednesday or I'd have to look at the calendar again. And they may hit this deck even though it's not doing as well as Snake Eyes. So there's the main deck. There is the extra deck looking good. And let's keep on going. We then have a wild card, AOK -okay, with 60 card Phantom Knight, not using any new cards in the main deck whatsoever. And then we have the extra deck here, Alzam with Zodiac. Is this really Zodiac? Yeah, okay, Tekton Zodiac with Scareclaw. Scareclaw still being a deck. Uh, okay, wow, uh, interesting. Where's Monadia map? Good job. All right, let's keep on going. Good job, Alzam. We have Zen Wow with Snake Eyes. This is the way Subversion is kind of interesting. No Birch in the main deck. We've got one Nibiru. A lot of people were playing DD Crow initially, then I think we started taking DD Crow out. I'm starting to see some Snake Eyes players play Monster Reborn in the main deck, which is really good for reborning the opponent's Promethean Princess. Looking good. Besides, no Elf. Let's scroll on up here. We have. Another one, Black Mario 91 with the Birch, Triple Poplar, playing the Silvera, no chase. We got one Nibiru, okay. The one Nibiru also works well with your crossout designate. They, you could argue that they're playing it mostly for the crossout. And it, we're also seeing that Nibiru is not even that good against Snake Eyes because the Nibiru triggers the Divine Temple to summon a Flame Burst from the back row onto the field. And uh, yeah, that's uh, they still set up a great turn one, then equipping the Masquerine into the back row of the Flame Burst summoned off of the Nibiru triggering the field spell. Sprite Elf is something I like to see. Very nice. We have Justinian playing Magician Souls, which we saw in a Snake Eyes deck in the TCG where they had three bonfire and they're still playing this. So, okay, that works out. Here is the extra deck, good job. Not everyone's playing Zeus, so nice to see that. And anything too interesting? No Nibiru, okay. Moving on, we have another branded Despia. Both branded Despias playing Dogmatica Maximus, if I'm remembering correctly. Let's scroll on down to have the extra deck in the picture here. Very well done, good job. N uh, Nilus LB. And then we have Kaido. Kaido is playing their version of, you know, if Imperm's good, then so is Valor. Valor onto Ash is great. Imperm onto Ash is great. If you are struggling against Snake Eyes, I know it's difficult to do in addition to your three Maxi, your three Ash, your two called by, but three Imperm and uh, three Ash. Just uh, really think about your other cards that you don't need to add ashes on top of the imperms. But you know, I keep on saying that you generally only the top tier decks can fit triple imperm, triple ash, a droll, two Nibiru, a triple tactics talent on top of the already the maxi ash blossom package. It's just crazy that they could fit this many cards. It's wild. And then, ooh, heroes. So why is Heroes not as good as the other decks? We are uh, have enough room to fit in the double droplet and double imperm here. It is putting us at over 43 cards, unfortunately. We do have a Ghost Bell also. Cross out Designate with the diverse amount of hand traps here to stop pretty much anything the opponent uses against us. Very well done. Very happy to see Heroes do well. Good job, PDS. This is the extra deck, the brand new Infernal Rage, setting up the Neos Wingman to be summoned during the opponent's turn to pop cards on the field. Very good. Now let's keep on going. And then Titacon TTK, Pendulum 46 card Chad deck. Guess what he is not playing? Where's Max C? Where's Ash? <laughs> no called by. But instead we have Dimension Shifter, which is almost an instant win against Snake Eyes. Okay, that works out. Good job, Titacon. And there is the extra deck. Wow. Uh, you know, if Titacon gets max seed, he just takes the max seed challenge and wins. Let's keep on going. Captain Buns with no furniture cards, 40 cards, triple torrential, double dimensional barrier to banish one and set the other with the trap trick. 
triple of the Daruma Cannon. Yup. Holy moly, we got Skill Drain. We got one Draco Utopian Aura. Very nice triple Solemn Strike for the Ashes. Also, you know, it's just a very good card overall. Got double balls. I thought we maybe had three. No, we go with two. We roll in with two. Very well done with the extra deck. This is good for spinning a card back. Being used with the Dogmatic of Punishment, which we're playing two of. Let's keep on going. We then have second place Squid. <laughs> Squid with the 41 card deck. We got the Silvera Betrayal. That is good. Anything else that's not standard here? Triple Poplar, no Birch. Okay. There's the extra deck. The Trisbana. This card was spicy. Banishing the entire back row against Pendulum. Also good against what we just saw, Labyrinth. All right. And then your first place deck list, Victinium. 40 cards clean, triple droll. Drolling an opponent's max C is fine because we could still make huge plays under even our own Droll and Lockbird as we saw Fictanium get drolled and still fully cook up one of the best fields I've ever seen. We even have room for triple droplet, doubled Nibiru, triple impermanence, not playing Valor, that is okay. And then there is the extra neck double Promethean Princess, there is a Jet Synchron somewhere in this deck list. We're adding it afterward. Uh, that's okay. I'm not sure if he's playing 41 cards, though. Just double check with the deck list after we upload the video. In the top comments, you'll be able to check out the deck list with the correct update. It's definitely playing Jet Synchron because we have no other tuner plays with the Formula Synchron. All is well. Thank you very much. And that is the tournament. I'll see you on the next Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash decade on next Sunday, where we're going to have more leaks and another $1,000 tournament. Thank you very much. We are out.